During week six, we talked a lot about the soft tissues of the musculoskeletal system, excluding muscles. So we talked about tendons and ligaments and cartilage inside joints. So with tendons, we saw how tendons were really well adapted for tensile forces because they connect muscles, which produce force, to bones. And so tendons experience very high tensile forces. They get pulled on like a, like a stiff cable or a spring. We saw that at the microscopic level, if we could take a little slice out of a tendon and look at it under a microscope, we would see these wavy, nicely aligned fibers of a protein called collagen. And specifically, this is something called type 1 collagen, which is also found in ligaments and also, also bone in, in lower amounts. And we saw how the structure of these fibers of collagen create the mechanical properties of the tendon. So if I draw a nice stress-strain curve here, we see that unlike bone, there's this toe region in tendon. And then we have this linear region, and then there's a plastic region, and then maybe we get some deformation or maybe it just ruptures immediately. And the existence of that toe region is a consequence of the fact that you have these wavy collagen fibers that each individually start getting straightened out as you pull on the tendon. So more and more of these are getting straightened out as we're moving up this way of the stress strain curve. We also saw that tendons exhibit this uh, phenomenon of viscoelasticity, which is that if we load them very suddenly, their stress strain curve, instead of looking like this, it looks like this. And that's very useful from the perspective of protecting tendons from damage. So tendons seem to be uh, better at handling high sudden uh, loading rates because of that viscoelastic property. We also saw how tendons, this, the, the mechanical properties of tendons change in response to both exercise and in response to prolonged periods of immobilization. So suppose you have a you know, healthy, normal person's tendon look like this. If that person does a lot of, say, strength training over several weeks and months, especially high intensity, high load strength training, that stress strain curve might lead to, number one, an increase in the stiffness of the tendon, so the slope here, and number two, an increase in the ultimate strength of the tendon. Whereas if somebody is, say, uh, prescribed bed rest for some really serious disease or they're immobilized in a wheelchair, then their tendon is, number one, less strong, and number two, not as stiff. Like with bone, we also saw that there are, based on some, some um, animal studies, we know a little bit about how you should design programming to maximally stimulate tendon response, and it seems that somewhere in the vicinity of maybe a thousand loading cycles uh, generate the maximum response of collagen synthesis. So that's just looking at what is the turnover of collagen in your body post-exercise. And like with bone, it's not like if you do more than this, it goes down, but it ju just means that you're doing more damage, but without any additional increase in response in collagen synthesis inside your body. We also saw that the uh, following, say, an intense lifting session or intense plyometric training, the first maybe 24 to 36 hours are of recovery are dominated by collagen degradation. So that's probably the little pieces of collagen that get damaged during an exercise session, that's probably those little bits of collagen going out into the bloodstream. And then from maybe 48 to 72 hours post-exercise, we start seeing collagen synthesis start to take over. 
So that has some implications for how to program uh, exercise. And then lastly, when we were talking about tendons, we also saw um, the, the distinction at the cellular level between maybe what we traditionally call and incorrectly call tendonitis. And I made some arguments for why we should maybe instead call this uh, tendonosis, osis for degeneration instead of itis for inflammation, or more generally, the term you'll see is tendinopathy. So that's what we learned about tendons, and in the next videos, we'll talk about ligaments and cartilage.